Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. In 2015, Ambika and Hoshner quit their jobs and set out to rediscover the country through planes, trains, and rickety old buses. What started as a break has now grown into a life of travel and discovery. On this podcast, they take you through the highlights of their journey. This is the Rediscovery Podcast. In this episode, we take you to one of our favorite beaches in India. And no, it's not in Goa. This beach on Pamban Island is all the way in the deep south of India off the coast of Tamil Nadu. So, uh, we reached Pamban via train. We were coming from Madurai. And the first sight you see of Pamban as your train goes over this huge bridge is something that nothing will really prepare you for. It's blue, green waters. Turquoise even and the kind of stuff you don't normally associate with seeing in beaches of India. Especially when you've, you know, been on the West Coast, Goa, Kerala. You see the brown, grey waters. But this is just something which is so nice and fresh. Yeah, it's not so much the beach as it's the water and the colours in the water that really grab you yeah, as the, soon as you get off the, that bridge. And the bridge is also pretty cool itself, right? Yeah, the bridge is cool. I mean, it was it's India's first sea bridge 100 um, years old it was built in 1914 so 100 years old and it was the longest sea bridge till the bandra valley sea link opened so and it only took 3 years to build so i mean hats off to the brits back then who built the bridge yeah, and it's also years. it's also one of those bridges that opens in the middle to let ships pass under it yeah which so that's cool. pretty cool yeah now other than the the rail bridge which goes over sea you also have a road bridge which um connects the island of Pamban to mainland India um which is off the coast of Tamil Nadu on the east side and we highly recommend taking one trip by road and one trip by rail yeah, don't necessarily take two trips maybe you go by rail and come back by road yeah whatever but the the sight from both sides is quite quite incredible so so definitely uh one of the things you must do as part of your whole Pamban adventure So what is Pamban? I mean Pamban is an island obviously as we've mentioned. It's found in the Gulf of Mannar which is the gulf between east the east coast of India and Sri Lanka for anyone who wants to put that in a geographical context. Um it's one of India's five marine national parks uh and it's an ecologically protected zone. So full of amazing amazing underwater sea life and beautiful beautiful coastland yeah and surprisingly which is all protected. surprisingly not many people know about it most people come to pamban actually to visit rameshwaram which is a, a holy pilgrimage site for the hindus you know the place where there's a big ram temple yeah. but we'll talk about that a little later we went to pamban actually to see the island itself and the beautiful beaches there uh we stayed at a place called kathadi south which is about 13 14 kilometers away from the main town of rameshwaram and uh, it's a very different beach experience it's not like your goa beach shack sort of thing there's there's no one there it's empty it's pristine it's beautiful it's green and it's i mean it's not even known as a beach destination like i said most people just come to visit a temple most people will never reach the beach in pamban they'll go to the temple they'll do their stuff and they'll bounce so the beaches here around the island are either mainly used by the fisher folk who live there or parts of it is under you know research under the the national park yeah so we stayed at this uh, lovely little adventure camp which is located just off the beach like literally 50 meters from the waters and so very nice setup they've got a couple of little cottages they've got some tents there's lots of you know beer and crab around and it's 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 a very very lovely setting and the beach itself is beautiful it's pristine it's just a stretch of empty beach you'll only find a few fishing boats there you'll find starfish on the beach you'll find shells you haven't seen anywhere else you have this calm sheet like blue green water and you can spend hours just doing nothing there which is pretty much our perfect idea of a beach vacation yeah i mean it's ideal and and i have to admit if you're somebody like me who prefers calmer water then this is a great option as opposed to the western coast of india where the water is a lot choppier so i loved it and it really was our ideal beach vacation i mean we did what we swam we walked around the beach we collected shells we ate umpteen crabs all of them that are caught fresh and then brought 
to the camp for you to yeah, cook and, and eat. Yeah, and you can do stargazing in the night because it's completely unpolluted that whole area, and it's, and it's in the middle of pretty much nowhere, so there's no light pollution. It's lovely. Uh, if you are not the type to spend days, you know, bumming on the beach, you can do your share of water sports there. Uh, but it's it's not your regular jet ski kind of stuff. You'll get, you'll get to do kayaking. You will get to learn kite surfing. Yeah, it's kite really, surfing is really big. It's, yeah, it's one of the few places in India that teaches you how to kite surf. So that itself is pretty cool. And and most people go for the kite surfing there. And uh, but for me, it was the beach bombing that had this. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's the ideal beach vacation, which is why Pamban is now our favorite beach in India for um, a holiday spot. I think one of the great parts about it is that there's nobody around. So we spent three days, and other than the people at the camp, we met a couple of fisher folk in the mornings. They'd come, they'd get into their boat, they'd head out, they'd come back a few hours later. We were still lying about in the water. They'd park their boats and go home with whatever they'd caught. So it's great, you know, because you've got this. It's not over. I mean, you can't even say it's overcrowded. It's not crowded at all. There's like nobody. Yeah. So so plus points um, on all of that. And because it's right on the Gulf of Manar, there's all kinds of marine life uh, over there. So you can go snorkeling, and that yeah. is one of the things that you can do with the camp. And beautiful, beautiful stuff to see yeah, underwater. They, they actually take you out to another island a little bit off the coast, which there's a lovely little cove, and you can snorkel there. And you're out there in the water, either swimming or snorkeling, and then you look back, and it's nothing like you've seen anywhere. At least in this part of the country, um, and and sure, the Andamans is beautiful, no doubt. Lakshadweep is beautiful, but this is so close to mainland India and is still such a beautiful paradise. And I think that's what really stuck with us. Yeah, you don't need to take like a flight for twenty thousand bucks to get there. Just yeah. go by train, reach okay. Pamban, go across that lovely bridge, see the beautiful blue green water, chill, eat crabs, drink beer. It's excellent. <laughs> yeah, so you know, ideal. Two three day vacation spot, um, but like Hoshna said, if you are one of those people that needs a little bit of activity, then kite surfing, snorkeling, and if you want a little bit more activity, the island of Pamban with Rameshwaram town uh, does have a couple of other cool things to do. There's a fair amount of history on that island, and it's got its fair share of legends going around. So you can check those out once you're done lazing on the beach. One of them is Rameshwaram Temple. Yeah, so Rameshwaram Temple, uh, according to the Ramayana, once uh, Lord Ram was done destroying, you know, Ravan, he came back and he decided that he needed to give penance because he had killed a Brahmin. Uh, I mean, Ravan was a Brahmin, so he decided to pray to Lord Shiva, and he wanted uh, a lingam there. So he dispatched Hanuman to the Himalayas to bring him a lingam. That took a while. So in the meanwhile, Sita built a lingam out of sand. And the story goes that Rameshwaram Temple is built around those two lingams, the one eventually brought back by Hanuman and the original one built by Sita in sand. Now, I mean, whether you're a temple person or you believe in Hindu mythology or you don't, the temple itself is incredibly cool. It's it's huge. Um, it was built in the 12th century by the Pandya dynasty. It's got the two lingams inside. But one of the coolest parts about the temple is that the corridors that circle the temple are supposed to be the longest in a Hindu temple in Asia. So really, really long. Good for, I mean, long walk around the temple. There are 1,212 columns, each with carvings on them. So you could spend a little bit of time checking out all of these columns. Maybe not all 1,200 of them, but a few of a them. Few. Yeah. Um, bear in mind, like several other Hindu temples, they don't allow cameras inside. But, I mean, you could just go in and uh, remember some of the stuff that you see. So check out Rameshwaram Temple. It is a major pilgrim spot, so it does get rather crowded uh, as because people come to see the temple. So, I mean, maybe time your visit accordingly. The other cool part about the island of Pamban is Dhanushkodi. Yeah, so Dhanushkodi is pretty cool and it's cool for a number of different reasons. So it's this little village that is located way out in the sea. It's on a thin sliver of land. I mean, if you look look at Google Maps and search for Dhanushkodi, it's way out on the east coast. And it's it's actually closer to Sri Lanka than it is to mainland India. And it's a... Tiny little village, surrounded all around by water. It 
I mean, it's so far into the water that in the 60s, a cyclone destroyed the entire village. There's nothing left of it now. But it also has a couple of interesting legends associated with it. I mean, this is actually the point, according to mythology, where Lord Ram built his bridge to Lanka. And interestingly enough, uh, way back, there was a collection of limestone shoals and rocks that connected Dhanushkodi to Manar Island in Sri Lanka. And it said that a few centuries ago, those shoals and rocks were actually above water and you could, in low tide, make that trip by walking across those. Those eventually got destroyed in about, I think, the 15th century. 15th century, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but at, they existed before yeah, that. So at one point, you could walk from the easternmost point of Pamban Island, which is Dhanush Kodi or Ram Setu, as they like to call it, to the island of Sri Lanka. So, I mean, kind of cool if you think about yeah, that. That that, that ecological the, that formation of rocks geologically is called Adam's Bridge. And uh, it's called Adam's Bridge because there's another story associated with it. Apparently, according to legend, uh, Adam of, you know, Adam and Eve fame stood on Adam's mountain on Manar. In Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. And he gave penance for a thousand days standing one on one foot. And that's where the name Adam's Island or rather Adam's Mountain Adam, and Adam's Bridge comes from. So fair share of legends and, and cool tales associated with uh, Dhanush Kodi. So it's interesting enough to go there because you can try and yeah. check out all and, of these uh, things. And Dhanush Kodi being so far, I mean, on this tiny sliver of land into the sea, uh, you can't get there by, you know, using a regular car or taking an auto or a bus. You need to take uh, your car on water up to a point, after which you get into this modified 4x4 old Mahindra vehicle, which runs like a sort of public bus. And it, it's literally going on the sand on the beach. And you're, you're driving through water. It's going left and right to avoid water wherever it can. And, you know, it's, it's a crazy ho- journey. Yeah, you're kind of hoping it doesn't sink. And obviously it doesn't because there's, you know, 4x4 four four Mahindra van after Mahindra van going. And they're stuffed full of people. And everyone's really excited to be going to this Ram Setu, Danush Kodi place. And you see on one side, there's just the same incredible blue, green, all shades of blue and green water on both sides of you and you're going, you know, you're driving through this um, stretch of sand and then you reach Dhanush Kodi, which is now a ghost town because after 64, when the cyclone destroyed the village, they never rebuilt it. And when you get there, you kind of wonder why people Anybody chose to, there, yeah, yeah, why they chose to live there because there's nothing. I mean, there's, you can walk f- the breadth of that stretch of land in a few minutes so it's not very wide it's not very long and you're literally surrounded by ocean on all sides and you're left to the mercy of the elements so it's got a little eerie feel a bit to it there's some buildings are remaining yeah, there's, there's old a, ruins of a church there's a church there's an the, old railway station yeah there's the old railway station so train that you take that comes and stops at Rameshwaram town at one point went all the way to Danush Kodi but because of the cyclone and the weather it got destroyed and never was rebuilt and um, so you can spend a, a, a little bit of time walking around this old ghost town we were there it was it was drizzling a little bit so that sort of added to the Add mood old eerie vibe yeah, it, yeah. gray skies and, and um, yeah, it makes you want to go back to you know Pamban and have some more crab and beer right and lie on the beach a little more <laughs> with all the with all the nice sunny weather over there so definitely I mean we'd recommend a a short trip to Dhanush Kodi. It's easy to get to from Rameshwaram town. You can just take the bus and then the 4x4, four four, um, like Hoshna said, and and check out the ghost town that is on the island of Pamban. Yeah, so that's it for Pamban. Go chill on the beach, go check out the beautiful old Rameshwaram temple and go to the ghost town of Dhanush Kodi. And crabs and beer. And crabs and beer. <laughs> so, I mean, just a couple of pieces of useful information. Um... You can take a train from Madras, Chennai, or from Bangalore. Um, There are trains, overnight trains, to Rameshwaram town. If you want to stay at Kata de South, get off at the station Pamban, which is before the last station of Rameshwaram town. It's just closer in terms of taking an auto or something. You can stay at the same camp that we stayed at. Yeah, it's run by Quest Expeditions. They actually have two camps there, one in Kathari South and one in Kathari North. Which is the south of the island and the north, north of, of the, the island. island. And the one in the south is is much more basic, but it's really beautiful. We really recommend you stay there. The one in, north, in the north is set up like a more boutique property. It's got 
uh, you know, it's, it's also very nice. It's got hammocks and front gardens to your cottage. And, and there's you know, attached bathrooms. So, I mean, that's the, the added benefit mm-hmm. of the north side. Um, but if that doesn't bother you, I mean, in the south side, you can even pitch your tent on their lawns. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, and the food is, is yummy in both places. So, I mean, yeah, most people go to Rameshwan and stay in the town itself in, you know, one of the many hotels that are there. We suggest you definitely don't do that. Go that 13, 14, 15 kilometers, get to Kathadi South or Kathadi North and stay there. It's something you will not regret. Yeah, grow some roots and spend a few days. It's a beach vacation you're not going to forget. So that's it for our favorite beach in India. To know more about our journey and our travels, check out our website. That is www.rediscoveryproject.com. Or We're find us on Instagram or Facebook, Rediscovery Project. Look it up. Thank you. Thank you. In the next episode, we take you deep into the villages of UP to play holy the way it has been for generations with bhang, color and lots of song and dance. The Rediscovery Podcast is an Indus Vox Media production. If you like listening to this podcast, check out their entrepreneurial podcast, My Neighbor Zuckerberg, where Munaf Kapadia and Nabil Merchant talk to like-minded entrepreneurs about their struggles and successes. New episodes every Monday.